You guys may have seen this video that's making the rounds this week online. Uh, Microsoft is coming out with something called the HoloLens, and it basically, to me, pretty much means that the Matrix is happening. Let's take a look. What if we could go beyond the screen? Where your digital world is blended with your real world. Now we can. This is the world with holograms. What will they enable us to do? New ways to visualize our work. I have an idea for the fuel tank. New ways to share ideas with each other. How are things going your end? I just put the images in OneDrive. Perfect. More immersive ways to play. New ways to teach and learn. So put the new trap in the place of the old one. Now what? And tighten here and here. Yeah, you can call me Neo because we are on our way to being in the matrix. I, I love these kind of stories. I love this technology stuff. We do a lot of stuff on the bad side of technology and we're gonna do some stuff on that later. But this is all cool, right? Like when you were watching this, did you feel like, wow, the future is actually kind of cool? I'm gonna wait until I see it. I think that that's, I don't know, I'm-, I'm Scary? Are you no, scared? Do you think the machines and, are gonna take over? No, 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 I'm just really skeptical. First of all, it's not gonna look like that. Like I've done a lot of stories on holography yeah. and on kind of real-time rendering of holography. None of it looks that good yet. The, all of that was just computer- CGI. CGI computer. So that's just- that, None of that was actual holography. So right. I think that, I, I just worry that they're trying to sell us a product that's not going to deliver nearly what that video says. Right, so you're about. saying at first it's gonna look more like- Yeah, it's uh, gonna be jittery and kind of It's gonna more weird. look like, help me Obi-Wan, you're my only hope kind yes. of stuff. <laughs> before we get to the full color. For sure, but yeah. that being said, the um, the technology, it looks like, is is there. It's not gonna be quite yeah. as pretty, it's not gonna render the right way, but the fact that we're starting to have that integrative technology is really cool. I do wish they would have sold the educational aspects of it a little yeah. bit more right. in that video. Well, this is just to try to get us juiced up. Exactly, idea, like to play right? Minecraft in our living rooms. Like, that was kind of sad, actually. <laughs> that scene to me was kind of sad. That seems sad, that guy doesn't get out much. <laughs> what do you think? I, I totally dig this. Yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome. My first thought was, way to go, Microsoft. I mean, it looks amazing. I think, yeah. I mean, obviously there's always something lost in translation between, you know, from concept to production, mm. but I mean, virtual reality, it's amazing. Google Glass, like, they're stopping production on that. Yeah, so what, what happened with Google Glass? Because we did literally probably 15 stories on it. Everyone thought it was gonna be huge. I've only seen, I mean, we're in Los Angeles here, so we have a lot of early adopters. I've only seen one guy with it, and he was actually on a Segway too, which made him like the ultimate dork I've ever seen. And also yeah. that but, seems kind of dangerous. <laughs> Probably, probably extremely dangerous, <laughs> but, but what happened? I, so, just think uh, it, I think Google Glass was like the Game Boy of augmented reality. I mm. mean, it wasn't really that functional, you know, added no sort of value to users' lives other than looking really, really dorky. Right. Game Boy was awesome, though. Yeah, Game, Game Boy, Boy was, was pretty great. Was, I remember when I got my uh, Game Boy. It was the Game Gear of augmented reality. Game Gear. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good reference. Right. That was the Sega one that yeah, failed. Wow, very good. impressive there. Um, thank you. Imagine yeah. the porn. <laughs> yeah, there will be great porn applications there will be great porn. for this. Um, but really, so you know, I joke about the Matrix thing all the time, but like, I really believe we're gonna enter, at some point we're gonna cross some threshold here, and I guess this is sort of what Ray Kurzweil is talking about with uh, the singularity. Like some point we're gonna just enter this digital life and we're just gonna be the batteries well, for this whole operation, right? In some ways, yes. I mean, I think that you can, there is a dystopian future that you can kind of envision if you've ever seen uh, Black Mirror. I, I, yes. So I just started watching it this week. I tweeted about it last night. There's an episode that's basically this. There's an episode, well, there, there's the grain episode, but also this reminds me of the episode, and I won't give anything away, but where these kids are basically in a big farm and they're just on a bicycle all day, exercising and like playing these video games <laughs> to earn points. And I think that that's, it's going to be a, a situation where people are gonna have to find balance between having a healthy and nourished body and between living in a digital world yes. where you don't kind of require a lot of the, the environmental and biological um, cues that you yeah. need in the real world. Yeah, I mean, just like recently, I upgraded to the iPhone 6. I know that you guys both have the iPhone 6, and I've noticed that my eyes are starting to bother me at night, basically, really? because the screen is bigger, it, is it big. projects a lot more light, and it doesn't filter out the blue light at night, which we know disrupts melatonin production, so it's uh, like, 
Also, really, really bad um, autocorrect on the iPhone. Terrible <laughs> the iOS. It's like really like, terrible. Like, com- <laughs> like making up words. It's I not know. that it's just yeah. fixing things. It's actually making up words. Um, do you think one day that we're actually going to have two societies, two like parallel societies? Because it seems to me that obviously only people that can afford this stuff are going to get it. Then you're going to have people living in this digital space, and then you're going to have pretty much everyone else. Now, I know we already have the 1% and everybody else, but really, we're going to have like a true digital divide. We do. I mean, I think we already do have a digital divide. You know, something like close to 4 billion people don't have internet access. I mean, that's crazy to think yeah. about, that it's so integrated into our lives now. I don't know what I would do without being able to use my GPS to get somewhere, without being able to just, you know, Google something, Wikipedia something right away. And the fact that 4 billion people on this planet, or close to it now, don't have internet access, I think you're totally right, and we're just going to see that digital divide widen and widen. Yeah, yeah, the divide may widen, but I feel like the rising tide lifts all ships. You know, like mm. the average person in in sub-Saharan Africa has better cell phone technology than the president did 50 years ago, or some crazy stuff. Like right, that, that, yeah. that but, sounded about right. That's yeah, it, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'm, I mean, I, I remain optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you guys think that we're going to need at some point to actually get away from some of this stuff? Because because uh, actually that episode of Black Mirror, which was pretty mm-hmm. fantastic. Um, we'll link to it in the uh, we'll link to it in the description right down there. Um, <laughs> uh, that there were the whole point of it sort of was that they were losing something at the same time. That the more we go with this digital stuff, that we're losing something very human. Yeah, I right? think that's a common trope in like um, TV shows and, and movies that use uh, digital technology as a plot point. Is this kind of disconnect to reconnect? Theme, which yeah. I think we all have to do periodically to kind of take stock of where we are in our lives, to reconnect to our families and our friends and things like that, and actually look people straight in the face instead of through a screen. All right, I'm looking at you in the face, although it is through a screen. That's <laughs> still pretty good. What do you think? Which side of the digital divide are you on? Let us know in the comments right down below, and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>